The Trump administration wants to pull out of a major aerial surveillance treaty. The Open Skies Treaty allows 30 nations to carry out observation flights over each other's territory. The U.S. claims Russia has repeatedly violated it. Pulling out of the treaty is expected to strain relations with Moscow and upset some European allies as well. Russia and us have developed very good relationship. As you know, we worked on the oil problem together. Uh, I think we have a very good relationship with Russia, but Russia didn't adhere to the treaty. So until they adhere, we will pull out. But there's a very good chance we'll make a new agreement or do something to put that agreement back together. But whenever there's an agreement that another party doesn't agree to, you know, we have many of those agreements around the world where it's a two-party agreement, but they don't adhere to it, and we do. When we have things like that, we pull out also. All right, let's go to Dakota Wood on this, Senior Research Fellow for Defense Programs with the Heritage Foundation. Thanks for your time tonight. Uh, pleasure to be with you. Thanks. Why was this treaty originally written? What was the idea? What does it allow? Well, it goes all the way back. The idea goes back to the Eisenhower administration in the 1950s. So as the Soviet Union and the United States were developing nuclear capabilities, you wanted some kind of mechanism that would allow each to verify and keep an eye on the other. Uh, nothing really came of that uh, until 2002. Uh, and then under the Bush administration, George W. Bush, uh, an agreement was finally signed. So Soviet Union gone away. Uh, it's now Russia that we were dealing with. And this is seeing, again, as a, as a confidence building measure. So it allows uh, countries to take a look at military movement, right? To keep track of where the yeah. other militaries mo moving to or perhaps uh, changing position to. According to the terms of the agreement, uh, uh, on th uh, three days of advance notice, you can fly anywhere you want to over the country. And uh, this is optical. It's using regular cameras, uh, not electronic surveillance gear. And so you file a flight plan. A representative from the country that you're flying over can also be on that aircraft. And, and you're supposed to be able to go wherever you want. And then you would tune those flight plans to try to look at things that you think are of interest, certainly. And it's that last part that's caused some problems uh, with the United States and that Russia has not uh, adhered to the, those terms in the treaty. Most other nations, I take it, do adhere to the terms if they make use of the treaty at all? Uh, they do. I mean, uh, you know, France or Germany or the United States, the United Kingdom uh, really hasn't put any restrictions uh, on that, whereas Russia has limited uh, the amount of time or area that can be covered over Kaliningrad. It has also carved out areas of exception within about 10 miles, I believe, of some border areas uh, joining Georgia where Russia views a couple of provinces as independent countries and uh, therefore not uh, uh, a part of the, that treaty overflight. So there are those types of things that have really caused some problems. Okay, is it problematic? What's your take on the fact that we're hearing this from the Trump administration on the same day that we're also hearing them say they want to outspend China and Russia on arms? Well, I think it's an administration that is really starting to put consequences uh, to rhetoric. So uh, over many, many years and over many administrations, at least here in the United States, uh, the U.S. will say one thing, uh, wag our finger, uh, but there really isn't a consequence. And so you never see behavior actually change. And it seems that countries will change their behavior when they see a great benefit to that, or they see a cost, a consequence that, that is higher than what they're willing to tolerate. So I think this is another example of the Trump administration uh, wanting to put a consequence or a cost uh, to serial violations of treaties, just like pulling out of the uh, Intermediate Nuclear Forces uh, Treaty, the INF. Okay, so it's a negotiating tactic, perhaps, to get Russia back yeah. into a deal on the nuclear missiles. Right, yeah, nobody wants war, right? And you want to have these assurance and reassuring and confidence building sorts of measures. But if the other party isn't playing according to the rules or the terms of the agreement, uh, you can uh, request that they do so. You can uh, make strong comments that they should. But if the behavior doesn't change, you really don't have any other option but to withdraw from that agreement and then see if something uh, new can be formulated. What do you see as the problem with the U.S. perhaps having to follow through, withdrawing from that agreement, and then not having another, another agreement to replace it immediately? 
Well, you could lose some short-term visibility into what's going on. So we do have satellites, many countries do, with extremely sophisticated capabilities that can look at very um, minute details in a country. But because they're so high up, they are subject in some ways uh, to weather patterns down below. Uh, and you can't really get, get, get uh, up close and personal, where with an airplane, uh, you can. Now, the two aircraft the United States used were built in the... Uh, what, 1992, I think, 1993. So they're almost 30 years old. A $10 million program to replace that with new gear is being estimated at $250 million. So there is also a financial component to this. Got it. Dakota Wood, I've got to leave the conversation there, sir. But thank you for your time tonight. I appreciate that. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks.